What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Limitless Business Owners Podcast. My name is Andrew Georgie, and I'm here with my co-host of the podcast, Dan Fisher. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, first of all, we want to welcome you. Okay, We're super excited to be on this journey, this business owner journey with you, and help you along the way. Okay, our whole goal with this podcast and really our passion in life is to bring the everyday business owner content and stories they can relate to, and also fresh new perspectives, fresh new mindsets, new thoughts, new ideas, strategies, tactics to help you grow your business. Okay, if you take one thing out of each episode and start implementing it into your life and business today, we promise you're going to start seeing massive growth. Let's hop into the show. Today, we have an awesome conversation about environment. Super stoked for this conversation uh, with my boy, Dan Fisher here. Dan, how's Pennsylvania? How's Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh? Good. We got some sun today. Unusual. Um, We are, um, I don't know, heading out of the 60s, which is like, you know, May, we're always chasing snow or uh, 80 degrees, which was very strange. But anyways, um, you know, I'm a big nerd on weather, so I could talk about that all day. (laughs) But how's it going over there, man? Dude, it's good. It's good. It's been nice. Well, it's raining today, but it's uh, it's been good weather. I'm I'm waiting for my fence to be installed, so the rains halted those plans. I'm like, come on, <laughs> I need to fence up. I need to let my dog run. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, no, it's good. It's good. The fam's doing good, and um, yeah, you know, it's been a it's been one of those weeks so far that you're just kind of grinding through. You're just trying yep. to make it, make your way through. And, uh, but we're here and I'm super, super excited to be on this podcast and, and dishing out some good information uh, about yeah. environment, you know, and, uh, I know you and it I ha- talked about it. it. Go ahead. It has been, it has been a week, man. It's been a, a week for <laughs> both of us. Like, um, you know, just being transparent, like both of us had these moments this week where we're both like, and mine was literally like a minute ago, where it's like, think, you know, your thoughts are just kind of slipping away. You feel distracted. Yeah. Uh, and you said you came to, came to a, a conclusion with yourself and you kind of solved it. Um, yeah. Maybe before we get into it, kind of go over that real quick. Yeah. Well, I mean, gosh, so like past two, I don't know. I mean, you could probably tell in our meetings, Dan, that's like my brain just wasn't there. Like the mm-hmm. creativity wasn't there, distracted, uh, just wore out and, And, um, uh, so this morning I got up and I was like, I had to tell myself, like I had to, I could have made a decision of just like going through, you know, getting in the shower, doing my normal morning thing. But I I had to stop and be like, Hey, and this is, this is what I've learned to do. Um, and it's an intentional thing. I had to tell myself like, Hey, it's going to be a great day. You know, we're, we're going to have a great day. I've had headaches the last two days. You're, you're you're not going to have a headache today. Yep. You know, it's going to be a great day. Um, you're going to be energized right? And you're going to bring it because we have podcasts. We have a live training later. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to bring it today and you are, uh, you know, the voice people need right now. Yeah. It's like, like tell like tell myself a law of attraction. It's it. I am. I feel more energized. Think and grow rich, man. Yeah. I feel ready, you know, and there's (laughs) a lot of power in that. I'm just telling yourself, um, those things. And sometimes it's a correction, you know, it's like, um, you, 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 you have to correct yourself. Uh, yeah. in those moments. So, um, and yeah. sometimes when you don't, when you can't do it yourself, like it's really nice to have someone to bounce ideas off of. Like for instance, yesterday, the reason mine was, um, you know, m- my stress was up lately was just because, you know, profit margins have changed in the lead business because of ad costs and, and different things. But, um, we're going over the math and, and my mind likes fun things. And when we go over disappointing things or not necessarily disappointing things, but like like, okay, now it's time to grind things. Like, first yeah. of all, I can't, I do get serious, but it is stressful to me. Um, so I, I came in this morning to Andrew and I'm just like, Hey, you know, um, cause it was Andrew and I were talking some numbers and I, and I appreciate it. Uh, cause sometimes I can live in that fun world. Um, and then not and totally misunderstand what's happening in the w- world of like uncomfortability. Uh, and that's, that's just natural. So, mm-hmm. um, that made that had me feeling stressed, and so this morning I came in just kind of blanking out and being like, "Man, I'm having one of those days." And uh, you know, it just happens to all of us. So I just wanted everyone to know that, like, you know, it happens at all levels, and then you get over it. You know, it, it you, you find ways through friends, through yep, uh, groups of people, through coaches, through psychologists, like psychiatrists, everything. You know, we well, we get there. I mean, we have the choice. 
right? Like we can, we can, it, it may not feel like you have a choice of feeling that way, but we, like we do, like you can, yep. you can make a choice to correct it. Um, and, uh, it's sometimes a matter of like, how fast can you get back into it? You know? Um, I mean, you're going to feel those things. There's going to be hours where you're just like out of it and it might be days, yep. you know, but you, you can let days turn to weeks and weeks turn to months. It's like, you gotta, you gotta I find have done a way, that. you know, you gotta find a way to snap out of it. And, uh, and I think that's, you know, Dan and I, I know we do that for each other. There's times where I'm in a, I'm in a funk and Dan's like, Hey, you know, my wife does it, you know, there's, yep. you put people wives are the best at it. Or they wives, are. husbands. The, I would say more wise just because like, I, I believe like women have that, like, I don't know, sixth sense kind of thing, but yep. guys can tend to be like, what? I didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot like, we, we say women are, you know, emotional. It's like, no, I, I guys are very emotional too, you know, yeah. a lot of it's internal. So, right. Uh, but, you know, that goes into today's topic, environment, you know, and it, like the massive role it plays in your growth and your daily growth, um, you know, so we're going to dish out some important, facts about your environment some things that we've been learning about environment and how important it is and what you need to do to change it right yep. and then we're going to be talking about four thoughts about you and your environment at the very tail end um, so don't fast forward there's a lot to understand about environment before we get to those four thoughts right um and you know the more and more we go through life dan i i kind of um come to the realization that um if we let our environment control us, it kind of shapes, it, it shapes us. It creates who we are. It does. Right. But then on the backside of that, we can control and create our environment. So it's like, mm -hmm. regardless, your environment will shape you. Yep. Um, so it's like, okay, that means I need to get out ahead of my environment and understand what environment is so I can shape and control my environment. So it creates the best results in me. Right. So yep. our environment is, is several different things, right? It's, it's Dan and I are talking about who we put ourselves around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where we spend our time, right? Are you watching Netflix for hours? Or are you reading? I'm not saying doing that's bad, but it's where we spend our time, the percentage of time, what we consume, right? And this is anything, right? This isn't just information. It's not feeding our mind, but it's also what we put in our bodies, what we eat, what we drink. Um, and, this is one I've never thought about environment, but the experiences and situations that uh, we go through, that mm -hmm. is environment as well. You know, and yeah, I mean, think about being at home, mm -hmm. you know, you have, let's, let's think small town. Let's not think it's this um, rural to suburban living yeah. and you guys, and you basically grow up, you go to high school, you, you kind of live in that area. Maybe, maybe you go to college around that area. What have you experienced in that area? You've experienced, um, you know, maybe a couple different bars, probably the same friend group. Um, you probably experienced maybe one YMCA or some, some sort of gym. Um, and the, the diversity and, and thoughts that you see there is very lacking. So like, yep. that's your environment, but if you, and I know you're going to go on into this and, and talk <laughs> about it, but changing it is, is where, um, you get your power. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and, um, that's, that's kind of proven in, in certain experiments, right. And, um, really data that, you know, if you hang out where you've always been, you're going to stay where you, you've always been, you know, right. and, and you're going to, you're going to typically become the, the average of that environment. Right. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, and that's because our, our environment largely triggers our mental and emotional state. Right. Um, you can probably think right now of some place that you've always been, um, that you go to quite often, that environment, and you can probably think about how you're going to feel in those certain environments. And uh, to that effect, you're also going to know how you feel with certain people. Like I'm thinking of a couple people in my mind. Like I know I feel different around this person than I do this person. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I know I, I, I feel different when I'm talking to Dan versus when I'm talking to my old friend from high school, you know, um, yep. that, that is because your environment, um, largely tr triggers th those emotional, emotional and mental states mm -hmm. inside of us, you know, and, and the truth is, is if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably someone that has some goals. You want to achieve some goals, you know, you are, um, wanting to get to some 
form of success that you have in your mind, right? We all have those things. Um, and you know, when it comes to achieving goals, we typically think that we just have to kind of like will our way to it. That like, we just got to grind it out. It's like, it's a matter of my willpower. It's a matter of, I'm going to go get this done. And we don't realize that willpower while it has some to do with it. It doesn't, it's not everything. Mm-hmm. Our environment really does shape whether we reach those goals or not. Right. So we have to alter our environment to be able to achieve those goals. Um, Dan, I'm sure you can think of a spot where it's like, Hey, I wanted to level up. Um, and so I changed my environment to, and then maybe not right away, but, um, that environment held you to a higher standard and you leveled up. Um, you know, I know you and I both have bought like different programs, coaching programs and things like that. And I know I can say for myself that, um, while sometimes that investment up front hurt, and guess what? When you want to achieve goals and you don't want to invest up front, you will never mm-hmm. attain goals. Okay. Like just that's just how it go, goes. You know, you have to be willing to invest up front. Might hurt a little bit, but typically, if it hurts you, you are stepping into typically a higher environment because they're requiring more of you and it's going to cause you to level up. Dan, I know it's the yep. same way for you. I don't know if you want to speak a little bit, talk a little bit about. Uh, a, a scenario or instance of you hopping in a, in a program and then months later you level up because you became the average of a higher environment. I I have. And um, I think I've done, I don't know, very little of them consciously yeah. um, because I always have this like want to grow. And so like that has just naturally happened where I've, I've gone and, Mm. sought out different courses, mentors. It's it's just been a natural thing. And I think a lot of the people that listen to this probably have that natural feeling where it gets caught up is when you can do it conscience consciously is where you probably grow the most. For, for example, when, when we went to um, Denver and we, Britt and I both told ourselves like, look, we can't like this. It's too far away from family. It's, you know, expensive. Um, and then we went there and immediately we weren't even off the plane or we were basically just off the plane in the airport, didn't see the mountains, didn't see anything that was really attractive. And we were like, Nope, we have to do this. It just felt right. And we knew because we knew there's, we know there's a lot of leveling up that's going to be done. Yeah. And so now what we did was since that's a conscious decision to go and move our, our environment completely, um, now we can build ourselves up to that point. Cause we know there's a deadline and we know that our, we're yep. moving in, in September and now we like, it's literally been a, a, a change. I don't want to say 180, but for, for Brit, but she is like, I think she's surpassing me with the <laughs> want to, yeah. to get to a, 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 a huge level. Uh, for the first time the other day, I heard her say that she wants, she's, she wants to be a millionaire. And before that it was, you know, like when I first met her, it was like, I want to be comfortable. Kind of like the illusion of the white picket house, white picket fence with the house and yeah. things. Um, you know, middle class. I don't want to, I don't want to upset anything. Uh, but now as a whole new Brit and, and we've seen this, this change um, where she's grown and now she's looking to be a millionaire. And, and I, I honestly, she, she can move mountains with the freaking thing she says. Um, and, and she does it with a passion and she's, uh, you know, on the right track to like keep the trajectory way past me. Yeah. I mean, she she's looking to start a podcast and all that, all from trying to change our environment. Yeah, and and you know that's um, there's that drive, like that drive, like hey, we're going to be moving to Denver. Um, we're changing our environment. It's probably going to require mm-hmm. a little bit more of you guys. You know, um, yep. You know, resource wise, uh, it's moving is states away is not easy. So like the demand is greater. Um, and it's probably kicked your motivation up because you've taken on greater level of responsibility. Right. Um, and you've actually kind of increased the stake for success there. Yep. Right. Like you've said, Hey, um, if we get, you know, 
well, we want to go do this. We want to move. We want to do these things. Um, so what is, what is at stake for us doing this? Well, you've already connected some of the dots in your head of what's at stake. Well, if we don't reach X, then we can't get Y. Yep. Um, you know, and that's, that's, um, really, really important. I heard a good quote and I, I meant, I was trying to tell you this this morning. This yeah. is one of the things I blanked on. <laughs> um, so the, the, the quote from, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, he, he was basically saying that poor people with a poor mindset, mm-hmm. um, and that could be anyone from poor to middle class, yeah. uh, could be even, you know, some rich people if they were just kind of placed in there. But if the poor people think I can't afford that, so they hear a price and they say, I can't afford it. The rich person on a rich mindset says, how can I afford it? Yeah. Um, because that question opens the mind while he said a statement closes the mind. And that's what we did when we went to Denver. Um, our, I mean, we were looking at houses for like 250 to 300,000 down in, in Charlotte, right? Mm-hmm. With our highest price being at 400. Now we go to Denver and the minimum price is 400. Yeah. But we didn't say we can't afford it. We never said we can't afford it. We actually said, how do we make this work? Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, it, it's shifting that, that whole mentality on that side from simple moves. Absolutely. And that's an environment right in um, even talking about like from Charlotte to uh, Denver, mm-hmm. you know, you, that dollar change, you know, your minimum was 250 at Charlotte. Now your minimum is 400 in yep. Denver. Um, that is an environment change in itself, right? The experience you're, you're feeling, the situation you're going through is causing you to level up. Um, yes. So it's not always so much in a, you know, of like, hey, I'm going to join this group, but it's also like, what situations are you creating for yourself to create a higher demand for you to help you level up? Um, right. Where we see people stay the same is they don't ever put extra demand on themselves. Demand means challenge. That means you might, demand means under pressure. Um, there's nothing of demand that doesn't have some sort of pressure or challenge, right? So um, I think taking risks and things like that put extra, and the reason why risk level you up is because it puts extra demand on you, which you're able to grow under demand. It's like working out. If you can't go to the gym and stand there, like you got to go to the gym and put your muscles under some sort of demand and pressure so they grow. And then you have to feed it the right things. So yeah. environment really, really doesn't matter. Um, something I've always heard um, is that thoughts create feelings and feelings drive action. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and that becomes uh, a cycle, right? Our actions then dictate our thoughts, which reaffirm our feelings, which create the same actions and so on and so forth. You keep going in this perpetual cycle and you know, I think a lot of people's questions like, well, how do I change that? How do I change those thoughts? And really when I say thoughts, it's like core beliefs and values and, and, and those kinds of things that drive and your subconscious that drive conscious thoughts that make you feel a certain way subconsciously. Yeah. Um, and one thing we've learned is, you know, to change those, you have to get exposed to new, new people, right? Um, you have to hear new worldviews. You have to new, hear new paradigms. You have to hear new ways. Um, if I wanted to, you know, like Dan said, Brett wants to become a millionaire. If she was, but, but never put herself around other millionaires, it would seem impossible. Right. Right. So she has to put herself around new ways, new people, new thought patterns, new perspectives, um, because that over time starts to shift what your thoughts are, which affects your feelings, which drive the new action. Um, your yep. worldview, the 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 kind of the thing that your thinking sits on in your head, you, you want to call it your perspective, your lens, your paradigm, controls your trajectory. Yep. And uh, not enough people, we just adopt typically what our parents told us. Like you got to think, you know, majority, you know, your first 18 years of life, you were under your parents' worldview, their paradigm, their belief system. Um, some of it's good. Some of it could be bad, you know? So it's our job to, after that point, start shaping our own worldview, our own paradigms, 
and taking in new. We don't take in new. We can't learn new. Right. <clears throat> I think one of the one of my biggest skills, um, I think that that I'll give credit to myself, um, is I, I think I'm I can be pretty open minded with a lot of things. Yeah. Um, that could be a big weakness too. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because you get so much information coming in, you're you got to You really have to be really decisive on what's good, what's bad, what works for you. Absolutely. Um, but I think being open minded has been brought me to some of the best opportunities I've had, um, you know, where I was able to, you know, a lot of people say no is, is the best whenever you're referring to business. And, uh, yeah, if you're looking to stay focused, yeah, absolutely. Um, but the ability to say yes to something that you feel uncomfortable doing or, um, might be new or, uh, might feel scary is probably one of the best things. I used to be intimidated to talk to, owners and CEOs. And now, honestly, I, I don't even think anything of it. Like yeah. it's, um, it's just another day, you know, We're, they become friends at that point. And so I've changed my paradigm where that's just a normal group of friends. That's a normal environment. Now, now what do I chase the next level? Yep. It makes me think of the movie. Yes, man. With Jim Carrey. <laughs> it does. You know, Absolutely. That's a great movie. He was a no man before that. I remember them shouting, no mm-hmm. man, no. And, and, um, <laughs> you know, but in that movie, he he's like forced to say yes to things, and mm-hmm. he has way new experiences. Um, he starts becoming livelier, you know, more outgoing. Yep. Um, you know, that's another thing to think about is like your per- like we think our personalities are like a stuck static thing, but our behaviors actually form our be- our, our our personality, right? And our behaviors yep. are driven by what I'm talking about: those thoughts, feelings, actions. You know, so you can see by him opening up and um, he just reminds me of you, Dan. It's like, yeah, let's go do it. You know? Um, <laughs> and I'm sometimes the opposite with like experience and stuff. Like I've never tried that before. I'm not going to do it. Um, but it really does shape new uh, behaviors, which yep. creates a new personality for you. You start becoming somebody different. We are not locked in as the same person. And I'm a little, little later on in the show, we will cover um, those four thoughts about you and your environment. We'll be talking about how you are changing around people that you don't even realize you're changing. Right. Um, yeah. Well, how have you changed? Because I know you, you've mentioned a lot that you're an extrovert and it's, it's honestly hard for me to see that, but how have you changed with oh, an introvert, the mean, podcast? Yeah. Oh, or, yeah sorry. An, an introvert. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> it's funny because when you ask some people, they're like, Oh, there's no way you're an introvert. It's like, I'm a hundred percent an introvert. Like, when I get around <laughs> a group of people, I am not the guy looking for attention. I'm like, sure. I, I'll be the background guy. You know, I'll be, um, and I realize for what my goals are, and this is what's changed. I realize for who I want to be, um, who I want, and, and I, I, it's not a, a me thing. It's like, who do I have to become to help people? Mm-hmm. Who do I have to be? Well, I can't help people if I'm quiet. I can't help people if I'm just in the shadows in the back. Um, if I put myself in the right place, yes, but in how I want to help people and how I believe I can help people is not doing that, is not shrinking back. It's It's becoming more. Um, so Mm -hmm. while I will always, and I always think of introvert, extrovert in a different way than most people, I'm like introvert, um, I being around people drains me. It, it takes all energy out of me. Like, um, that's, you know, when I'm on meetings all day, it's just, I mean, and some people are like, I love meetings. I get energized around people and people, people. And I just can't wait to be around people. I'm like, I love people, but I need some me time, you know, to recoup, Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of why I think of introverts. Extrovert. I know some people are like introverts, like they're very quiet, extrovert, they're loud. Um, so you, you see a, a version of, of me, Dan, that um, hasn't always been there. I've had, a, I, I think I was telling you, I used to run meet, you know, big meetings, you know, at our, mm-hmm. at one of my jobs, 20, 25 people, you know, and had, had to, had to lead. So it was a very learned thing. It's not a, you know, I would, I, the first, my first thought isn't to, go talk and like be around. Yeah. I, I think I'm, I think I'm similar, honestly. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, I'm not I'm definitely, it was, it, you know, if, if, if anyone knew me back in high school, I was more of the quiet reserved. Yeah. Uh, also didn't realize that ADD. So just spacing out all the freaking time. Um, but, um, you know, I was always thought of as that. So it, it, it did kind of maintain itself into college. And that's, that's really where I started to let's say come out of my shell yeah. with a cliche, but um, it was more of just kind of forcing myself over and over mm-hmm. in these situations to the point where 
I was actually doing, you know, I, I started weather uh, for Kent State, and I was I was doing weather on TV, and that was that was painful, <laughs> um, being on camera and and like just kind of learning that whole process. Yeah. So yeah, I think it can be learned is, is, is important. And, and to do that, you have to put yourself in the situation. And I would say you're probably, you're, I don't even know if you get nervous anymore or if you ever did for doing the podcast. Oh, I did for sure. I, I, I couldn't tell. I think I told you, uh, you know, especially when we had like, like a first couple of guests on and I guarantee I'll still get kind of nervous. It's like, it's cause it's not just me and me and you, it's somebody else. So it's like, uh, when we're starting the podcast off, if I'm just hopping into the conversation, great. But, um, you know, we, we kind of change that up a little bit, but, um, it's like, I would get nervous going through our, our intro. I would run out of breath and like, man, <laughs> I, I, you know, it, but I would never, and that's normal for it. Yeah. I do that too. I would absolutely, I feel so, so, you know, so much more comfortable now. It's like, this is who, I, this is who I am. This is, you know, um, what our conversation is going to be about. I mean, you know me, I'm a preparer, like I'm, I'm prepared, um, you know, guys, we have notes for the show. Like, it's just how I am. Mm-hmm. It's just how I'm wired. Um, I gr- grew up that way. I've just, we're always prepared. You know, um, when I was growing up playing baseball, it's like I had to get mentally prepared. I, I had to overcome, um, you know, lack of size. I was, I'm not six foot four, you know, uh, I'm five eleven. Uh, you know, I, I had to come over lack of size with, smart. I guess I did too, being five, nine, (laughs) you know, you know, but I, but I had to, I had to say, okay, how do I still perform, um, and get a good result? I didn't make an excuse. Well, you know, I gave up 10 runs today pitching because I'm no, it's like, no, how do I have to prepare to do that? I'm going to find an edge, um, somewhere, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I always did my homework and that's what we do here, but yeah, I mean, you, you evolve, you would change, um, you know, I've had to evolve in the situations I've, the environment I put in, I've been put in, you know, um, I've so I, so it only took nine weeks, right? Right. Or, or, I mean, it was much more, probably 30, yeah. you know, like it, it was, do. uh, it was getting past the first interview, right. Yeah. You know, like, and then survive knowing that you survived it is, and you keep when going. you're committed to growth, you're like, okay, what can we do better? Okay. Like, yep. um, yeah, you're just always looking for growth um, scenarios and situations. And that's this right here environment. We change our environment. I changed my situation. I changed my experience um, in life and it grew me, right? Um, I used to like be afraid of, I think everyone's afraid of public speaking, but this is kind of a way of doing mm-hmm. that. It's like, I would feel more comfortable. Not that I wouldn't be slightly nervous, but I know I could talk, yep. you know, I'm not so... I used to get nervous every uh, at working at ADP. We gave all we were doing was giving sales updates to, I don't know, probably about a hundred and some people. <laughs> and um, you know, you're, you're given a presentation and you know the numbers, you know everything. And I would still get nervous. Like I, I remember one kid came to me who actually would probably never do it, which is funny. But he came and critiqued me, um, and he was like, "Hey, uh, you really you sounded really nervous up there." I'm like, "Oh, I, I appreciate." your feedback, uh, I think, but you know, me, I was like real frustrated when I heard it. Um, but it gave me an opportunity to keep going and, and we did it every week. So I got pretty good at it. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, th- those are, I had a sixth grade teacher who I think this was a really cool thing. Um, Mr. Espy, and he would require every week or every other week, the sixth graders make a, pr- a presentation and, that's probably one thing. I bet you there's some people that that have gone through Mr. Espy's class and understand that this is that's probably what put them in a trajectory to do whatever yeah, they're doing. Absolutely. Now. I mean, those things you don't you don't think about, but changing those experiences, um, yep, are big. You know, so but that that worldview, that perspective that we're talking about, what you're kind of thinking, where your kind of life really sits on the trajectory of your life, what that sits on, um, you can shape through what we're talking about your external inputs. Okay. Um, you can, you can shape by the things that, uh, the information that you take in, right? Like we talked, the people you surround yourself with, the places you go, the experiences you have shape that worldview, that paradigm, that perspective, you know, and, and, uh, we've, we talk about it quite a bit of being reactive versus proactive. And most people, uh, you know, are very, very reactive, which means they go through life kind of mindlessly. Like there's no intention, no proactiveness, um, and 
uh, they, they find themselves in low environments, which creates a low version of themselves. Right. Um, and really they develop a perspective paradigm worldview that's extremely ineffective. Um, and they start accepting behaviors in their lives that just aren't good for them. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, we have to, we have to realize like, Hey, where do these thoughts and these choices, even decision-making like there's your decision, how you make decision is decisions are, it sits on your worldview. Like how you make decisions, the things you think about sit on top of your belief system and that the, the, your, your paradigm. Um, these things don't just come out of nowhere though. These things don't just exist. We've actually, the things we've surrounded ourselves with have impacted that worldview more than anything. I had, I heard a good analogy to what we're talking about today um, from a podcaster. Her name's Keisha, um, really popular with women entrepreneurs. Um, she does like the empower her podcast, but I heard an interesting analogy where she was saying that the, the people in places in your life are like hardware and your thoughts are like software. And sometimes you need a firmware update, which would be updating the software and your thoughts, basically fueling really what's good. going on with reading and, um, you know, just challenging yourself. And then there is a hardware update because those are needed too. things go out of date, um, which is taking yourself out of a situation and putting it into another um, and realizing what your um, environment is. And that clicked for me being, a, you a know, into tech. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought that was a really good uh, analogy on that on that end for anyone not understanding and we know that and maybe if, if if you don't know there's some software that you can't download you don't have the space to the capacity to the power to to fit a certain firmware or you right know, so you need to change the hardware to be able to grow the software and version yeah. up Right? How do we get to iOS fourteen? Can't go on an iPhone three. Right, right. It's impossible. Right, it can't handle exactly. it. So we have to be thinking about those things. Um, so if you think, hey, it doesn't environment doesn't matter, uh, those external forces shape who you are. Okay, um, you know, I think of like a garden. Right, um, we have to plant very, very. If we have an end result, I want to grow a beautiful garden. I have to plant specific things and I have to take care of the garden in a way that's going to grow what I want it to grow. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, a sunflower grows differently than a carrot, right? Those are probably two yeah. very weird plants I just picked, but um, <laughs> there's two different, two different things by two different, um, regimens to take care of them. I know nothing about gardening. Um, so, <laughs> but, and also climates, I yeah, mean, you, cl you, you can better. only, you you can't grow a palm tree in you know in the northeast um you know so you need to move into that climate yep. to plant that particular tree absolutely you know so new information new relationships and new experiences are how you're going to change okay yep um and you have to gather and you have to plant the right seeds from your environment to make the garden that you want that is your life Right. Okay. Um, and when you purposefully shape your environment, you, you be proactive, you're intentional about it. You can make massive growth leaps in a very short amount of time, right? Everything's going to take some time, right? It's not going to happen overnight. Um, and I'm not saying it's not going to be hard. It's going to be demanding. Like we talked about earlier, you have to increase the demand. You have to increase the responsibility to grow, right? That's just how it is. Right. But when you do that, you will make massive growth leaps. And if, if you start focusing on that, like I want to grow as a person, as a business owner, I want to grow my business. Um, you have to be willing to increase the demand. Right. Yep. Um, I think about the, the people we hang around with and most people say like, Hey, it's the five closest people. And I want us to think about something different. It's not just the five closest people around us, but it's also the five people closest around them because who's shaping them. If I, so right. it's almost kind of like, Hey, it's not what you eat. It's what you, it's what you eat, eats, you know, like, um, it's not the, the cow right. I'm eating, but what is the cow eating? Yeah. Right. Is it nutritious for me then? And they've, they've, you know, grass fed is the, you know, the best. Okay. So I, I look at what the cow's eating before I put it in my body. Okay. So shouldn't we look at our five closest people and see where, what environment they're putting themselves in? 
Absolutely. That will affect us. It's secondary, not primary. And people don't pay attention typically to anything secondary, tertiary, right? They think they think primary. They think you know the mm-hmm. first effect. But the biggest where people don't where people really get bit in the butt is the secondary because this they don't pay attention to it. So right. if I know, for instance, Dan, I'm gonna use you and me for example. If I know that, you know, I'm close to Dan. I think Dan's a great guy, but Dan's um, not spending his time where he needs to spend it. He has really crappy friends that are just not good people. Um, he's probably not going to be a great influence on me. I have to pay attention to those things in my life. And you say, man, Andrew, that's a lot of work. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Well, guess what? If you want to get to where you want to go, you got to start doing some things differently. You have to start being proactive. And that's intentionality right there. Yep. And usually you filter, I, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking like, how do I find out if those friends are those friends? Mm-hmm. Uh, usually it filters out with your intention. So if you're going out and being intentional with what you're doing, uh, people will filter out whether yeah. or not they want to argue with you or whether or not they want to like be around you because you're posting too much. Um, those people start to fall by the wayside yeah. and you don't even really have to worry about them. Uh, you know, I was back in, in another company, I, I remember someone left to be successful with MLM, right? Uh, she did very well. And to do that, she had to post all the time. Um, but she was able to keep a family of two, basically, um, you know, two kids, uh, very comfortable with what she was doing. And, and the funny thing is people were making fun of her, but she was doing whatever she wanted to do by just posting yeah. probably about shampoo and skincare products. <laughs> Um, like, so what happened was, is those people retracted from her friend group and she was able to excel and she left the company pretty quickly. So, um, you know, like I said, they, they filter, uh, even before you need to go out and think about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I had this line from this book that I've been reading. Um, it says history was not shaped by great men, but rather by demanding situations. Okay. So, um, (laughs) you know, necessity uh, the, of, of rising to the occasion is the single most important ingredient in the formula for greatness, right? Um, would, I, I like using David and Goliath. If the situation, and if David ran from the situation that he's facing with Goliath, would he be a hero? Uh, it wouldn't if, be a story. If that demand wasn't put on his life, would he have been? No. Might have still been a great man, but we wouldn't have heard about it. So right. history isn't created just by great men. It's created by demanding situations, right? So that's where kind of what we were talking about earlier, um, you know, like Dan moving, like bigger demand on his life. Um, there might be a situation mm-hmm. um, pop up, you know. Gosh, we could use situations in our businesses, demanding situations. There are opportunities for us to rise up, rise up right. or opportunities for us to shrink back, right? Um, mm-hmm. And we want to rise to the demands of our situation. Um, so if you haven't placed yourself in a position requiring you to do m- more than what you're currently doing, seek that out, right? Um, yep. You know. And I want to be clear, yeah. we're not telling people to go move. No, 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 no. Um, but what we, but what you may need is a move because you, you, I mean, it is very possible that your, your hometown could be just, um, it's a small pond, you know, like there's so many people, uh, like that will move to Miami that will move to Austin, San Francisco, yeah. cause there's opportunity there. There's, that's where the people that are successful will go yeah. and, and establish a business. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with the remote learning. Uh, but you're still going to have major cities. You're still going to have major growth spots. And that's one of the reasons Denver was one of our uh, top 10 is that's that's where everyone's going. Well, right and, and like with the online world, uh, it's so easy to put yourself in a, in a, in a, in a different environment. It really is. Like it I said, is. you have to it invest is. up front. Like a lot of these, you have to invest up front. You have to be committed to that. But that's anything with growth is going to cause some sort of resource investment up front and some sort of res- yep. resource investment throughout. Okay. Um, and typically that level, if you are uncomfortable paying something for an environment, it's probably a higher environment than what you're putting yourself in and you need to take the plunge. Um, you know, yep. if you're not paying anything, don't, you don't got to go spend 10 K on something. 
Um, if you're not spending anything, say, hey, how do I spend? What's what's uncomfortable? What's slightly uncomfortable? Is that $100 right. a month? Ooh, that hurts a little bit, but you're yeah. joining an environment where you are able to grow. You are rising up, okay? Um, you know, for it, it, maybe you've been spending 100 and you've getting, gotten to that level and you're like, hey, I'm ready for the next growth step. Well, $500 a month? Whoa. I couldn't mm-hmm. imagine. Okay, let's do it. Let's give it its due diligence here. And then you level up yeah. and become the average of that environment, right? Um, so we are always seeking out. And that's not a discredit to the lower environment. That was a stepping stone, right? Does it, it, that was a, that was a necessary, right? Yep. Um, so I have a question here. It's, you know, why isn't, and like I said, this is coming from a book I'm reading. Why isn't having willpower enough? Why can't I just bust my, I used to have that thinking like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to bust my way through this with will, you know, I'm just going to will my, mm-hmm. I, I have great willpower. I'm going to work my way through it. I'm going to grind myself through it. I'm just going to, I can just take this on. Right. Um, you know, and if I wanted to run a million miles per hour, am I able to? No. Why is there's ex, there's external physical limitations, if friction, like the ground, like there's things, there's external factors holding me back. But if they're, if like, if it was like, I just had to will myself to it, well, then I should be able to do it. Right. I mean, the truth right. is, is there's external factors. Our environment is a limiting factor. That's not like a pessimistic worldview. That's actually reality. Um, is that, we can't, I can't just will myself to go fly to the moon today. Right. Yeah. And part of it is a, a very simple concept of we all do this weird thing called sleep. <laughs> and, you know, our bodies can only go about 12 to 16 hours of like functional, yeah. um, like being functional. And then we have to go to sleep. You know, I, I don't really know the science behind it. I know we just get exhausted. Yeah. So, like, if you're going to will, your way through it, you are going to get exhausted. So then what happens after that? Well, even that, it might be impossible. It yep. might, you have external factors holding you back. Your worldview is holding you back. Uh, your environment is holding you back. Um, what you know or what you don't know is holding you back. External mm-hmm. factors. And we don't think about those things, but those things could make growth impossible for you. Right? right. If I remove gravity, I could then will myself to the moon. No one's figured sure. that out yet though. <laughs> no one's figured that out yet. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and the, the fact is, um, is you can't just will yourself to a result. Sometimes you have to look at the different pieces. Of the, yeah. It matters. You know, like you, you, if you don't have a will to do better, you're not going to, but that will to do better needs it. That first look is okay. What's my environment is my, are my external factors going to allow me to get here? Right. Um, and yep. you know, the truth is, is we are always evolving. Like you're evolving right now right? We are always evolving. Um, I, I don't believe in evolution, but I do think we do evolve to, um, certain, I mean, we're just like other plants and animals. Like you put, you know, you have a tree that wants to grow crooked and you put a a stick next to it to make it go straight. Well, that tree is going to adapt to its environment, which is now that, that, that stick that's holding it to go straight. It's going to adapt. It's going to grow straight. Um, you know, animals, uh, you know, we've seen examples of animals adapting and evolving to new environment to survive, right? Um, you know, right. the dif- difference is, is plants and animals don't have the choice to change their environment. They cannot. Human beings, we do have the choice to change our environment. So that is super, super mm-hmm. powerful. So you can control your evolution and, you know, change. We've heard this change is inevitable. Like you're going to change. Right. But, but growth is, is, uh, an option. Right. Um, so we want to grow. We have to be intentional. We have to control our environment because that's, what's going to cause ourselves to evolve. There's, you guys can look at the studies. There's studies that show that when you change, um, and I have some notes because I have a science background about like epigenetics, right? Some people believe like, Oh, it's in your genes. Um, and, and it's just how your genetics are that that's why you're like that false, like, um, our environment and things like that really do affect even how our bodies are. Right. So, um, epigenetics is whenever your body or this physical aspect is placed under some sort of, 
um, different environment, it expresses different genes. That's this right here, right? So how are we going to put yep. ourselves in the right environment to, uh, to express um, a greater potential inside of us? Yeah, I'm a, a big proponent on almost anything can be taught. Um, you might not be able to do it as the people that are naturally talented at it, but you can learn it and be really good at those yeah. things. You know, it, it's, I used to think I wasn't a natural talker. So, you know, what actually got me talking more was weirdly enough, audiobooks, books, uh, because it put me in a situation where I had so much, I had a lot of this random knowledge that I could talk to anyone really about anything and then also be confident yeah. about it. Um, so, you know, I had to change my environment on adding in audiobooks, and then I started teaching businesses on how those people should be reading or, you know, commuting with audiobooks. Like I started being an authority there all from adding in a, a $15 subscription. Crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, we're able to change. It's just about what you're inputting, right? What are my inputs around yep. me? Uh, you know, um, you know, so. Another thing that isn't like, why isn't goal setting enough? Like, why can't I just set goals and I go reach my goal? Right. Um, the truth is, and there's like, once again, there's been studies. If you guys want studies, you guys can just, you know, email me at Andrew at limitless business and I'll send you the studies. Um, <laughs> it, Whenever we want to change behavior and we just focus on goal setting and like changing our attitude, most, you know, nine out of 10 of people fail. So that tells me goal setting is not enough. Okay. Um, they're generally unsuccessful because nearly all of our behaviors are learned behaviors, like subconsciously, there's like, like we talked about beliefs, thoughts, feelings, actions, um, they're, they are created by our environment. So by setting a goal, I'm not, if I just set a goal and I don't change environment, I'm doing, I'm, pro I'm probably not going to reach my goal. Like that's, that's just the reality. Um, you know, I would say a good measure of that too is if someone who the, the people who are goal setters, you know, every year you know, they do the, the goal thing. Um, I would say if they've gone multiple years and they've said that same goal, either I, we know they're not changing yeah. something, but they need to change something to make something Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I know we're coming up, running out of time here. So, Dan, I'm going to hop into these four thoughts about you and your environment. Yeah. You hop Still in it. whenever you need to hop in. Um, so the first thought is, um, there are rules in every environment, every environment you put yourself has rules. Okay. Um, and, and I'm going to hone in on like maybe groups that you're putting yourself, people you're putting yourself around who you identify with. Um, there's social norms that those places have social rules. You could probably think of some right now. You know, uh, you know, there's a reason why when we go to the grocery store, not everyone's just walking around without a shirt on there, the, you know, there's, there's, the rules pretty blunt, but there's also unwritten <laughs> rules too. You know, um, maybe you go to church. There's an unwritten rule that you do what you, what you do, what you have to do and what you don't do. Right. When you go to a baseball game, I'm a big Cardinals fan. When you go to a baseball game, there is written and unwritten rules of what you can do and what you can't do. Right. So those are probably the most powerful things that controlling our behaviors, uh, more so than your ideologies and desires, right? Desire is said to be one of the most important or one of the most influential emotions is my desire. But um, if I'm putting myself in an environment that has social norms that go against my desires and I'm continuing to go there, those social norms will beat out my desire. I bet my yeah. desires change. A lot of the times those will cause, if you go against your desire or if something's going against it, it'll cause anger. And I think anger is one of the, it's, if, if you're comparing, it's probably right next to desire or maybe even a little bit more as far as like what's influential. Yeah. And, um, and, and you know, what's going to win every time you're going to get that yeah. angry person that with that, that, that reaction that will take you back and scare you out of your trajectory. Absolutely. Thought number two is, um, there is a limit to every environment. Okay. Um, in this book that I was reading, it was saying fleas, they put fleas in a jar. Okay. And they let the lid off. So the fleas would jump out. Then they put the lid on. So now the fleas learned that, Oh, there's a lid, right? I can't only hit over time. Guess what? The fleas stopped jumping as high. 
because they knew the lid. So then they took the lid off. No fleas would jump out. Those fleas had kids. And guess what? The kids wouldn't even try jumping out. Learned epigenetic type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So um, every environment we put ourselves in has a limit. The expectations of those around us establish our own personal rules and our own expectations. Okay. Thought number three is, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but our value is not, our value that we hold is not absolute to every single person around us. It changes, right? Um, so there's a saying like, 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 don't join an easy crowd, right? If you join an easy crowd, you won't grow. Go where the expectations, and here we go, and the demands to perform are higher. So, Dan, let's use the Cardinals and the Pirates as an example here. Uh, what are, what are the right. demands? Like, I know just from St. Louis, the demand for the Cardinals is to go to the playoffs every year and be a World Series contender, you know? <laughs> so players know that when they yeah. come here, they, they, that's the demand. Like, they talk about it, right? Um, the Pirates may be... Yeah, the demand is much right different now. I mean, and it changes, right? This changes. You know, I'm just using it as a t as a yeah. today. Uh, maybe 30 yeah. years ago, the pirates. You know, but something changed along the way where the demand lessened. Right, external right. pressures from even the city. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it goes back to those feelings, create action. Like now that they've been well, one losing season turns into two, two to three, and then now the fans remove that external pressure of having to go to the playoffs every year. The players feel right. that, you know, um, that's just a small, small example. You know, in, in some environments, you're a big fish in a small pond, but in other environments, you're a small fish in a big pond, right? Um, so, and around some people, you may feel like you can tackle anything while you're around someone else. You might feel like a small little ant that can't do anything. So that's how, you know, you have to yeah. be careful of is the, big fish in a small pond that loves yes. it. Yes. Uh, Cause they can come off as very successful. They can come off as like, they, they have a great network and they might be good temporarily, mm -hmm. but like you do have to be careful around them because you could get sucked into their, uh, I don't know what you call it. Um, like, a, um, they're, what am I it's like spunkiness kind of yeah. is because it's what's coming to mind, which is a funny word. Um, but like you get caught up in it. Next thing you know, you're, you're, you're there for 20 yeah. years uh, because it's, it's an addicting yep. feeling there. Yeah. And, and you know um, you have to realize that you and your environment are extensions of each other and that mm -hmm. you change your environment, you're changing you. Right. So that means if you put yourself in an environment that is demanding more, that is that environment we're talking about, um, you are going to change, right? Yeah. Um, so what you are doing in one environment can be very, very different than who you are in a different environment, right? So it's not like a, a static thing that you are the same throughout, right? Which is good news because that means that you have the capability to change. And you by you recognizing that, you're going to say, okay, well, how, that means I can grow pretty quickly because I just need to put myself in the right environment. Um, you know, and then going back to the plant thing, um, not all types of soil are optimized or uh, efficient enough to grow specific types of plants. Right. So right. you got to think about the environment that you're putting, you're putting yourself in. Um, now it really doesn't matter how much, like I said, go back to the willpower thing. If you don't have the right soil, but you have the willpower and the desire to grow. Will you grow? Impossible. You're not putting the right soil. Yep. Right. So we have to think about that. And then the last thought is um, we are always playing some sort of role. And this kind of goes back to personality that people that think we only have a fixed, like we are the same. Um, I have, I'm, this is my personality. So this is who I am. And they've, once again, uh, some studies say those who believe their intelligence is the same and that it, their intelligence is unchanging, that they have a very, very difficult time learning, right? Um, they um, have a hard time accepting feedback, right? And then they eventually give up. 
because they mentally break. And, and if you're at that point, I think that's where maybe a location change or some sort of major change, job change, whatever is required because you, you get a clean slate, yeah. you know, with, with your new environment, you get a clean slate with your, the friends that you make, the people that you come across, they know, they no longer know you as you know, the, the, the brand that you established before you left. Yeah. It, you're now able to rebrand whatever you'd like to be. Absolutely. And that's like being like your clay, like you're malleable, like, and the people that mm-hmm. realize that, Hey, I like, I can become smarter. I can learn, I can acquire skills. I can, um, become something more, uh, those people grow and change. Right. Um, and yep. like I said, that's a worldview. Um, they know they can be transformed through experiences. They know they can be transformed through their environment. Right. Um, the belief that you can't change typically leads to like a victim mentality. Like, Oh, poor me. Like I can't get smarter. I, uh, it's <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like I got, I know some people that got, I use, you know, go back, let's go back to high school, ACT scores. You got like a 20 or 21. I, I, I'm no rocket science. I'm just, I don't know if that's good or bad. To it's be honest not with that you. It's average. It's average. Oh, but I'm okay. committed to learning and I know I can acquire skills and information. And I, I know I can learn, you know, this is something I, I know I, I'm capable of learning faster than most people. So, um, does that mean anything? The person that got the 27 or 28 or even the 30 on the AC? No, it's like, I, I don't care. I don't care less because that person might think that their intelligence is capped out. I'm going to beat them out 10 out of 10 times, you know? Um, so, but once again, that goes back to our environment or school it makes you think, oh, you're only as smart as yours. You know, that's it. Good job, little Timmy. You're capped out forever. You got to work your job and, <laughs> you know, accept the peasant pay. Right. It's like, no, it's like, you can become something more. You can learn. What do you have to learn? goes back to that, you know, not, I can't afford it, but how can I afford it? Yeah. Question versus statement. Easy. You can change your patterns. You can change your roles, but you can only do that through altering your environment. So for business owners, this is what I would say. You want to change your environment, um, hop into a group that's going to require more, that's going to demand more of you. Start reading, start learning some new skills, new ways of doing things. If your business is plateaued at $400,000, you've been there for three years. Well, you need time. That's a sign that you should probably start to change. If you've regressed, it's time that you need to change your environment, right? And learn some new ways, see some new possibilities, experience some different things. Um, Dan, I sent you that excerpt out of that book and I talked about, talked about, Mm -hmm. um, this guy, his name is Nate. It's a, his name's not really Nate, but his name is Nate. Um, and he had a very successful business. I, don't, I forget what kind of business he had, but he drove like this old forever. He drove this old beat up like Toyota Camry, old Toyota Camry. Thought he was doing a great service. Like he's like, yeah, I'm saving money. Um, right. So the experiment was, is Nate went actually and bought a, I was thinking 11 or $1,200 a month Tesla decked out like he's like okay let's see what this does what do you think happened to his finances after that and i'm not saying hey go nate could afford it okay if you're if you can't afford don't go buy but nate 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 could afford it but he was choosing to stay and hold on to old so Mm -hmm. but still made him uncomfortable yeah um, the 11, it did make him uncomfortable because he was so used to doing something different. And I'm just pulling up the text right now. Yep. Um, it says um, his online platform and presence grew rapidly because he shared about his new purchase. And he got over 2000 friend requests from people involved in real estate. He had a real estate business, right? Um, you know what happened to his revenue and his real estate education product? Quadrupled. <laughs> okay. Um with his new car, some of the local people started to recognize it and began reaching out to him. He built credibility because of it. Um, and Nate's own psychology changed. He changed. Driving around in a nicer car made him feel awesome. His confidence shot through the roof. Um, he changed his experience. Yep. He changed his environment, what he drove every day. And something changed. His his 
his surroundings started to change. What happened, his results started to change because he changed one thing, right? Yep. So what are some things, you have to think, what are some things that I can change? And I'm not saying go buy a car, but what group can I start investing in? What, what that's where I was right? at. Yeah, that's, it'd be nice, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, hey, if you've been, into, if you can, aff- I hate saying this, but um, if you're doing good for yourself and you're still ride, driving around a 2001 Toyota Camry um, and you can afford it and it might hurt a little bit, right? It's, your finances might change. It might be the thing that levels you up. Um, but uh, you know, more importantly, I think everyone, regardless of where you're at, can invest in some sort of group, can start reading more books, can start changing the experiences they're having, go to an event. There's a bunch of free events you could go to, start changing those things, and you will start seeing massive, massive growth. Dan, Absolutely. any final thoughts? Mm, no, I always like to keep it simple at the end, man. Just uh, the, the question and statement is huge. Don't say, I can't say, how can yeah. I? And if you have had the same goals over and over again, change your job, change, take a risk and move, take a risk and make a new friend, go play a sport where there's a different group yeah. of people. Just change your yeah. paradigm. Awesome advice. Rock and roll guys. What's well, been real on this conversation. Remember the power of your environment and start growing. We'll talk to you guys soon. Hey, if you haven't rated or reviewed the show yet, please take two to three minutes to do so right now on whatever platform you listen on. It really helps the show rank better when people are searching for new podcasts to listen to. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook where we post daily clips from the episode. And then we're just going to ask you to share those clips, right? You never know who of your friend, friends are going to see that clip and then they're going to start listening to the episode and then their life changes because they hear something that really helps them overcome uh, a challenge that they're experiencing in their business. Um, it's really going to help them create breakthrough in their business and become limitless. Also, one last thing. Right now, we are offering a free seven-day trial into our inner circle group, Limitless Business Owners Inner Circle. And inside this elite group, you get to learn how you can experience immense consistent growth inside your business where you learn the strategies and tactics to grow your business, right? Surround yourself with like-minded people, other business owners that are experiencing what you're experiencing that are going through it right now that you can build key relationships relationships with and learn from. And also some people ahead of you that can also teach you something that's going to help you overcome something in your business right now. And the last thing you can leverage the strategies and tactics it takes to build your dreams and fulfill your purpose. Talk soon.